Right, it's a very, well, pleasant morning. We say that advisedly. The circumstances that bring us here today are very less than pleasant. It's not a good morning at all uh, for citizens in Zimbabwe, those who are enduring uh, a repressive, corrupt, violent dictatorship. Uh, the purpose of our press briefing today is to have a special emergency report from our change champion in chief, Advocate <coughs> Nelson Chamisa. And the coverage or the subject matter of this press conference is the political situation in the country. So without further ado, I'm going to defer proceedings to him. Uh, following his address, we're going to take a few questions, uh, which he'll address, uh, and I'll, I'll obviously advise you at the appropriate time of how we manage that. Oh, my God. Why do I do that? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, let me take this opportunity to just thank and appreciate um, Advocate Mahere, our spokesperson of the Citizens Movement. And let me take this opportunity also to thank you, members of the press, for coming to this very important um, press conference. I've not had press conferences for a long time, but I thought that uh, I needed this. Um, you can sit. I needed to have this press conference because um, it's such an important one. Just to brief you of my recent um, observations across the whole country. And I would say, fellow Zimbabweans, as I come to you, I'm coming to you under extreme circumstances of emergence and a crisis in our country. Just this morning, I arrived from Gokwe. In fact, I arrived uh, around in the a.m. Uh, of this morning. I arrived because I don't normally want to travel at night. What I saw in Gokwe, particularly in Gokwe Kabiun, is a very disturbing trend in the country. But it's not an isolated case. This is what I've also seen in Mashonaland East, which is basically our stronghold. I say so because of what I saw in Uzumba, what I saw in Mtoko, what I saw in Weza, and in Seke. But in Mtoko, I hear that today they are busy uh, beating drums and singing songs, chanting slogans, saying that Chamisa is not acceptable in this uh, zone of theirs, as they say. Unfortunately, they didn't know that I've already been to Mtoko, to Makaha, and I've seen and heard the stories and the cries of people in Makaha who are saying that all their gold is gone, all their resources are gone, their traditional land has been taken away. And what they are not getting from government is support, security, and assurance that their concerns are being taken on board. I want to thank the people of Mashonaland East, in particular Uzumba, Maramba and Fungwe, Murewa, Mtoko, Weza, for being very strong, for remaining steadfast, and for supporting the citizen movement. 
and for supporting the alternative. Under very difficult circumstances, against all odds, they continue to support us. There is unprecedented violence. Terror has become a daily dosage, and also with war zones, people in those communities are not allowed to freely associate, assemble, or even move. What shocks me is that wherever I go, there is always a counter program by ZANU PF, exactly the venue where we'll be holding our meetings. Just yesterday in Gokwe, I was shocked that July Moyo, Mackenzie Nune, Larry Mavima, we're literally coordinating an alternative in the counter program, not elsewhere, but where we're holding our meeting. And of course, they impose themselves on the police, making the lives of our police officers very difficult because they then poison it with politics. Instead of the police doing their duties, they are now being accused of belonging to one party or the other. Fair and fortunate. That has been the case elsewhere. You know, when I went to Mashingo, for the first time in my rural outreach program. And by the way, I'm going into the countryside to listen to the people, to hear their grievances and their cries, but also to share with them our next steps. A lot of people have been saying, what is the next stage? What is the next stage? We are very clear about what we are doing. And this is why we have been engaging business people, the church leaders, we have been engaging. Of course, unlike my brother, who is going and doing fair fair in all the churches, I don't do that. I go to the bishops, the leadership of the church, engage them respectfully. I will never go to any church congregation and sing or chant slogans. That's blasphemous. You are poisoning holy places. And my brother has been doing this with a lot of wanton disregard because he probably does not know that being at state house is not being in heaven. And must be understood that the church must continue to be undiluted as places of worship and not to be contaminated by partisan political issues. So I've said we have seen this whole thing of roadblocks. In Uzumba, there were roadblocks everywhere. <coughs> Just yesterday, they did a funny thing in, in, in Gokwe. You know, uh, they chased uh, after our, our, our convoy. We had to find ways of uh, uh, blocking them through our security teams. They had guns. AK-47s, uh, and of course they had almost 21 vehicles, but I understand that July was also part of that delegation. What shocks me is that you have government ministers who are behaving like little thugs. I don't understand it. They literally incite violence, sponsor violence, coordinate violence, which is unfortunate, very unfortunate. What we would want is to insist on peace. As I indicated, Rural areas have become centers of mass victimization, intimidation, and terror against citizens, particularly those who are in the alternative. I've seen that our chiefs are in trouble. Village heads are in trouble. They are being subjected to incessant harassment, 24-hour surveillance. Food from government, support from government is weaponized. Health has become commonplace in the rural areas. Violence has also become a big issue. But what I also heard, which is very disturbing, is that those who have always been violent are also dying mysterious deaths. Particularly in Uzumba, I was told that all those ZANU-PF people who were very instrumental in 2008 in the violence and before have all died in mysterious circumstances. It was something that we celebrate. It's an unfortunate thing. We don't want those kinds of things. But that is what is happening. Food, as I said, is weaponized. The human rights situation in the country has gotten to another level. What is clear is that the subject of the matter is human rights. You go to the villages, people do not have access to basic services on account of a party that they are alleged to belong to. I also got the information that issuance of party identity cards is being done by party leadership, ZANU-PF party leadership in the various areas. Why is this being done? Because they want to do regimented voting, command voting. That has become a big issue. And this is why Mr. Mahadi has been going around the, the country addressing crow heads and village heads. 
In Kabuna alone, we have about 1,908 villages. The whole country over 35,000. And Mr. Mohade has been addressing all of them. He's not addressing them to encourage them, to empower them. He's addressing them to intimidate them and to threaten them that they should not allow triple C activities or the citizen movement to do things. They've localized violence, they've localized things, and to make sure that they also stop me. I was being told just this morning that, in, like I said, in Toko, they were saying, oh, Chamisa will not come in here, will not allow him. Uh, I want to say this to Zanubia. I will go anywhere and everywhere. You will not stop me. You are not the owners of this land. Zimbabwe belongs to Zimbabweans. Mr. Mnangagwa, accept fair competition. Don't resort to your tactics that you have used before. They will not work on you. I can tell you this. I'm ready. I'm ready for peace. I'm ready to fight to the finish, peacefully, legally, and constitutionally. I know that you are using unconstitutional means, under and tactics, and you have also been abusing the courts. But I can tell you, victory for the citizens is certain. And we are determined, the people are determined, no darkness lasts forever. All darkness is but for a season. Just a few months ago, past six months, it's shocking to see that we've had over 28 arrests, mainly of opposition leaders, including the Yatsime 16. Just yesterday alone in Gokwe, 13 people were injured, badly injured. I saw all of them. Some were burned, literally by fire. Torture in broad daylight. Why? Because you are putting on a yellow t-shirt. And what they don't know is that I've been telling people that, look, if they want to kill you for t-shirts, don't worry about the t-shirts. Let's go Operation Mango. Yellow inside, green outside. Why? To preserve yourselves. Bizanu in their slogans. Bizanu wherever you are going. But show and maintain your integrity to support the change that you believe in. We have seen that there is a deliberate deployment of state institutions, processes by the ruling party, which points to a desperate attempt. They are very desperate. What is clear is that uh, from what, uh, what we are seeing, ZANPF is cornered on its way out. They have nothing to offer other than violence. The people are seeing through their gimmicks and their lies and propaganda. No one should be persecuted, threatened, or attacked for wanting a better Zimbabwe. The violence that has been reported is completely a declaration against the citizens. But history tells us that citizens always come first and come out best. And they always win, and we shall. We want to urge our police officers and security agents to continue to do their legal and lawful duty to protect the citizens, defend the law, and protect the country, as guaranteed by the Constitution. As a citizen movement, I must emphasize, we are against all violence, threats, cohesion, and as a government in waiting, we are patriotic, ready, as peace champions, focusing on the bread and butter issues, the answers that are going to bring solutions to the people of Zimbabwe as we inspire people to vote for change. Where there is discord, we continue to bring harmony. And where there is error, we bring correction. Where there is doubt, we bring faith. Where there is rottenness, we are bringing freshness and change. And where there is despair, we bring hope. We will not be drawn into very deliberate attempts to invite us into violence. We've seen the temptation, we've seen the machinations of Zanupia. <coughs> they want us to descend into violence so that they can then justify a state of emergence, justify then their tomfoolery, justify their macho tactics and their violence. But we will not allow them that violence. We will remain peaceful, we will remain maintaining peace. A lot of people have been saying, 
But Mr. Chamisa, we can't be beaten, you know, with our hands tied behind our back. I said, peace is fragile. Peace comes at a cost. Our high road is a high road to democracy. Mr. Changra would always say, I will never walk on dead bodies to status. I would repeat the same statement. Because I know that our road and journey to status is assured. So why would we lose a single life on account of politics? That will not happen. Let me also comment just on the issue of the economy and corruption. We note with concern that the economy continues to fail many Zimbabweans, but this is due to spectacular mismanagement and endemic corruption. If you look at what I have stated before, the economy is failing on account of bad leadership and bad governance. Look at how Zimbabweans are being treated in the neighboring countries. Like people without identity, without a heritage, without a, a, a nation and land. But each year the country is losing three billion, both to illicit flows and plunder of money through corruption that is taking place instead on the institutions by the admission of the state organs themselves. Ironically, in gold alone, the country has lost about 100 million every time, which amounts to our monthly requirements for medical drugs in our hospitals. 1.8 billion that is lost through our illicit financial flows is enough to pay a salary bill of the entire civil service paying them $500 per month. Currently, you know, the price basket is about 140000 But if you look at what the civil servants are getting, they're getting peanuts. They can't make ends meet. That is the same story with all our people who are in the various uh, professions across the various sectors. Having said this, one would say, but what would you say about the electoral environment in the country? Let me just say that in terms of our elections in the country, what is clear is that ZANU-PF is now engaged in a systematic attempt to try and reverse their defeat, which is inevitable in 2023. They are trying to manipulate electoral processes and outcomes, peg the, the constitutional and electoral bodies with their own people, but will not allow that. It's a fight that we are going to undertake what we need to see is the entrenchment of the SADC AU protocols, the values and principles of elections that are supposed to be embarked on. And I repeat, what they are doing is illegal and constitutional in terms of all the statutes within the country, in the region, and on the continent. The fees that they've charged are unacceptable. They want to make democracy a commodity, commodify elections, bring elections outside and out of the reach of many people. The appointment of commissioners has to be an agreed matter. It takes two to tango. They can't tango alone and will not allow them to tango. What are we going to do about it? We have already instituted a number of measures. Engagement of SADC is one of them. But also locally, we are engaging all the key stakeholders to make sure that there's a collective voice around this matter. There is going to be a free and fair election in 2023, and we will have to make sure that that election becomes a possibility. If there's no free and fair election in Zimbabwe, what it tells you is that the problems in our country will never come to an end. Now, I was telling some leaders within the region that the immigration crisis, as it is called, in the Southern African development community is not an immigration crisis. It is indeed a governance crisis in Zimbabwe. People are running out of this country on account of a deficit of good governance, the economic circumstances that they find themselves in, and if we don't resolve those, we will not be able to move forward. So I've given a couple of suggestions to our colleagues in South Africa to also give a moment and an opportunity to the people of Zimbabwe so that there is a as some kind of a breathing space for them as we fix our own situation in this country. We can't call Zimbabweans criminal because certain individuals in South Africa who are Zimbabwean have been criminal. You don't label and condemn the entire country on account of 
a few individuals who may have, unfortunately because of their own circumstances, have done something that is criminal. Let me conclude by saying, victory is certain. I've seen Mr. Mnangagwa yesterday, he was uh, in Mashona Lane Central, where people at a church, or allegedly at a church, were singing about Chamisa this, Chamisa this, Chamisa that. I want to thank Mr. Mnangagwa for being my big campaign manager. He's doing a fantastic job. You know, the only unfortunate thing is that he has taken his campaign to places that he's not supposed to, the church. I don't mind what the devil says about me. But I would be worried if the devil says something good about me. And as I have stated, state house is not heaven. We can't fight for power just for the sake of power. We are not fighting for power. We are fighting for change. We are fighting for values. We are fighting for a better life. We are fighting for dignity and peace. Not just for citizens in, in the triple C, but also for ZANU PF. Our fight is not a partisan fight. It is a national fight. We need a new consensus as a people. Beyond the liberation consensus, we need to come together in the transformational consensus. Work together and transform our fortunes as a people, as a country. And that's why we have said we count on our veterans. They are being abused. They are being used as an extension of a political party. They are not an extension of any political party. They can't be a wing of any political party. They belong to Zimbabwe. They are custodians, guardians, and defenders as well as guarantors of our ideals as a liberation nation. It's like the chiefs, custodians of our culture, tradition, and heritage. Don't abuse them into politics. Having said that, I'm so excited by what I'm seeing in the countryside. People are so determined. They are saying victory is certain. They are saying we are going to win by a big margin and we'll win big. And I see 2023 as an opportunity for people to come together, unite, and win big as citizens. Some are saying, eh, it doesn't make a sense you know, for us to go and participate in voting. Let me tell you this. Those who discourage you from participating in voting know the power of your vote. This is why they are discouraging you. This is why they say even if you vote, we will rig. It will not change things. Eh, I think this is a ballpoint. Can a ballpoint? This is a bus. I'm not aware of one. I got a ballpoint. They know that the vote counts. The vote matters. That is why they want to discourage you, disempower you. You are the masters. They are the servants. Politicians cannot be the ones who wag the body or the dog. We are the tail that should be wagged by the citizens. So please, citizens, take charge. Citizens, register to vote. Young people, this is your time. This is your nation. Make it. If you don't, you break it. Thank you very much. We thank our change champion in chief very much. Uh, without further ado, we're going to take a few questions. As usual, may you please identify yourself, give us your name, the news house you're coming from, and ask one question so that we can cover as many uh, media practitioners as possible. Thank you. <coughs> and just lift your hands and we'll proceed. Okay. Well, I can go ahead. Okay, uh, Mr. Chamisa, uh, I'm delighted to be from ENC. Sure. Uh, yesterday, there are several journalists who were injured going back to the Kope violence, and who were injured in Kope. Are uh, journalists safe as we are heading to, towards the future? Well, I wish I could say they are safe. Um, but unfortunately, I'm not the perpetrator in this case. I think the assurances must come from ZANU PF particularly from Mr. Mnangagwa. You know that I'm also equally a victim. I've been a victim of assassination attempts in Ntare. I've been a victim of uh, attacks on my uh, team and our convoy. The citizens have been victims. You know that everywhere I go, people are getting beaten up. There's a reason why they are doing that. They are scared of free flow of information. So journalists are endangered species in Zimbabwe on account of your ability to tell truth to power, on account of your ability to share information of what is happening. That's why journalists were attacked. I was so pained when I saw three journalists by the roadside, you know, because they'd been beaten up. I was really pained. 
and one of them was injured. I think he lost about two teeth. You know, it, it tells me that it's, it's so sad. And the reason why they were beaten, they were taking pictures. But they were actually covering both because Zanupia had come to hold their rallies right close to us. What was so pleasing was that ZANPF's rally was about 100 and 150 people. The Triple C rally was about 5,000 people. And I loved it because it was actually an election before an election. Any other result from Gogwe Kabun that does not produce an electoral victory by the citizens and the Triple C is a manipulation of the will of the people. I can tell you, I've seen it, I listened to business people, key opinion leaders, they believe in change and they're supporting change. So, yes. I hear you, what you are saying. I, I totally sympathize with those journalists and with you because you are endangered species. There's no guarantee, it's not just journalists. Every citizen is under attack. Church leaders are under attack if they don't agree with the incumbent. Young people are under attack. Students are under attack. You know, civil society is under attack. Look at Masarawe, how he has been persecuted, the leader of the rural teachers union. There is just an attack. Journalists are under attack. Everyone is under attack. Political leaders are under attack. Look at Job Scala and the, uh, um, the other 15, still included, our mm -hmm. MPs. They are in incarceration. On what account? <coughs> they are just alleged. An allegation is not a conviction. They have a right to bail. Scala has not committed any offense. Stola did not commit any offense. In fact, the majority of those people in Yatsime have not committed any offense. They are actually the victims who have now been turned into perpetrators and they are now being locked up. Almost 73 days, okay, in prison. Detention without trial was not even like this during Smith. What we are seeing is worse than what we have seen in this country, even during the rotation regime. So I'm extremely concerned about this. I've tried to reach out to Munangagwa to say you can't behave like this. Play fair and square. And then we beat you fair and square. If we, you beat us, we will celebrate you. But if you play like this, we will remain peaceful, but we will not give you the victory. And we will deny you an attempt to manipulate the people of Zimbabwe. So yes, I can't guarantee the safety of journalists as they do their job. But as, at our meetings, yes, we try. We always provide safety. But I can tell you that the situation in the country is very you know, depressing and we are worried. We are all being treated like banned people. Yet Triple C is legislating and making laws in Parliament. We are even giving Mr. Mnangaga water. The water he's drinking is cates of the leaders who are in our local authorities. But alas, they treat us like a terrorist organization. They are asking for our structures. Why do you want our structures? We have not asked for yours. Why are you so generous to want us to be so structured so that we def defeat you? We want to defeat you structurelessly. Without any structure, we will defeat you. Our structure is known by ourselves and will not be commandeered into doing what you want us to do. We are a citizen movement. We take all and embrace all. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Ruben Mujeni from the Nations. Uh, you have spoken about regional engagements, uh, speaking to static. Um, is that an avenue that is likely to yield results, or will we be back here again after that and we will be address as a table against static we engage in? Welcome if you are to come back again after another rally, but I can tell you that uh, uh, we are doing a lot of work. We leave no stone unturned. And SADAC is one of the stones that we obviously have to turn, just like the AU. So we'll make sure that we do everything within our power to give Zimbabweans a fighting chance for them to be able to express themselves. We have to make sure that we exercise all the available options for us to have peace in this country. Peace is very expensive, and we have taken the peace high road because we want this country to maintain and to be in peace. ZANU PF love violence. Their DNA is violent. They don't believe in independence. ZANPF people don't believe in freedom. They don't believe in peace. They don't believe in the sovereignty of the people. That's why they command their people. One, when, one man, one vote is not about one sabuk, uh, one vote for the village. No. The commandeering and the subjects, village heads are telling us that we are in trouble. 
that if we don't toe the line, we are in trouble. That must stop, and that is what we are fighting. So yes, uh, Rainbow, is that right? Yes. You can be assured that it will yield results. And watch the space. We, 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 we are doing a lot of work uh, to make sure that the elections themselves are a reflection of what the people want and want to see. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, freelance with the new sport is uh, Mr. Jamisa, you, you said that in the words of uh, Morgan Changirai, you won't write on dead bodies to state us. Sure. Uh, on the paper, on the new paper is categorically stated that the only thing that will remove them from, from power is uh, a military move that, uh, that uh, which they used also to assume power. In that uh, regard, can, that, can we say that uh, it's um, somewhat technically your side uh, accepting defeat that you won't, you won't claim the win next year because the NPF is saying they will do it whichever way military. Claiming the win does not mean killing people. Claiming the win does not mean walking on dead bodies. Claiming the win does not even mean some of the things that I hear people talking about. You know, we know what we are doing and you will see that is going to work. We are clear about the route that we have taken. But trust the process. Trust the vision. Trust the leadership. If you doubt our leadership, you always judge us at the appropriate time. Don't force us or harass into things. Don't harass us when we give you proper direction or when we take certain steps. We know much more about what's happening across the other side. And we know how the other side is so desperate to capitalize on our weakness to then count on violence. So we will not countenance violence. Violence is not part of our DNA. Peace is our language. Peace is our nature. And peace is our next foot forward for Zimbabwe. And we are going to claim our victory. Tell, mark my words. In the past, we would win elections, but not transfer power. Now we are focusing on not just transferring power. Already the inauguration plan is in place. We are ready about what we are doing. Nobody is the monopoly of state institutions. And also nobody has the monopoly of being foolishness and reckless. We can make sure that we democratize that monopoly. And by the way, it's not a threat, it's a promise. Are there any other questions? I love it. Thank you very much. I can see that uh, we're, okay, I see one last one. Uh, effort, and effort, yes. Um, <coughs> To do with um, electoral reforms, you mentioned about the fees that were gazetted by ZEC, and um, all we hear is talk there hasn't been any action. Uh, the last time I remember during the previous campaign, you were talking of having electoral reforms in place before you go for an election. But we are uh, less than a year away. What um, uh, reforms have you instituted, or what concrete plans are there? to make sure that uh, we actually have the electoral reforms before we go for the next year's election. Of course, you know that uh, there are times when in strategy you don't expose too much of substance, maybe just the form, uh, because of the nature of our uh, playing field. But I can tell you that we have identified seven critical issues that we say are the issues we want to make sure that they are dealt with. And we have put on the table that Mr. Mnangagwa and Zanu Pierre let us agree on the nature of the pitch and the stadium we are going to play on. The playing field must be what we agree on. If you then do not want to agree, we will find ways of making you see the logic and agree with us. Seven critical issues. The right to vote is fundamental. We want every Zimbabwean above the age of 18 must find it easy to register to vote. Right now, they've been suppressing the voting and registration of voting in urban areas or areas that they perceive to be triple C strongholds. Unfortunately, rural areas are our strongholds, and that's where they've been using party structures and using crow heads and villages to go and register for voting. And I can tell you that we are everywhere as a citizen movement. So the right to vote is critical, including the diaspora voting. I saw in Angola recently for the first time Angolans in diaspora voted. In Kenya, diaspora vote was there. We want a diaspora vote in this country because it is part of the SADC protocols. It is also part of even our constitution. The right to vote, there can't be taxation without representation. Yet, 
We gain a lot of money from the diasporans who are doing a fantastic job. And I want to thank those in the diaspora for the wonderful job they are doing at a family level in various communities and even nationally. They continue to pivot our country forward. We want to thank them. But they have to be given the right to vote. You can't get their money when you're also not giving them their rights. They have to have their rights. The issue of real-time announcement of votes. We don't want this meticulous verification business. Votes must be on a public domain, real time, and announced so that we all know. That's why in Kenya right now, of course, they have their disputes. But at least people know the outcome because it was being posted on a public domain. Even the press had a quite access, an access into the process. That is what we are pushing. Number three, we want to make sure that the voters' role is audited and auditable in terms of the Constitution. Let there be an audit by audit firms of the voters' role so that we are happy that the voters' role is clean and credible. And once it is like that, we know that the syllabus is what we are agreeing on. That is what we want to see happen. Of course, the security of the voter is critical in the rural areas and the security of the vote in terms of making sure that ballot papers, where they are printed, we know them, and we have identified all this. The issue of the media, the security of journalists, is also one critical issue. But also the ability. I don't want to be on ZBC. I have other platforms. But it's my right as a citizen to also share on a marketplace of ideas, my ideas. They always speak on my behalf. Why don't you give me the opportunity? If you want, I'm inviting Mr. Mnangagwa on a live television debate. I know that he will not campaign thereafter. Because I will just reduce him to his meat, intellectually and even on ideas. Because I have a clear and a solid plan, a new great Zimbabwe plan for Zimbabwe, which is going to develop our country. Now they are celebrating opening of supermarkets, opening of safe stations, and making a narrow lane to Masingo, and they say we have done very well. That's not infrastructure. You want to claim the parliament that was built by Mugabe? That's not infrastructure. Please don't go and claim other people's children and then claim you have a big family. Start your own. We want to see what you are able to do. We have not shown anything. You have squandered your time. They said, let's give the EDA a chance. There is no chance. You know, he has squandered all the opportunities. They say, no, it's good for business. Business is in Tatas. He said, no guys with business. And we told business that we are the best deal for business because we provide that conducive environment for them to do business and we will not have politicians putting their fingers in the pie of business. And that is our, our forefront and our self. I hope, effort you are answered in terms of our reforms. But in terms of what has to be done, I told you that we have a raft of measures that we are implementing to make sure that the elections are done. It's not about zanu it's about all of us, because elections do not belong to a political party, they belong to the citizens of Zimbabwe. Maybe a follow-up if I'm allowed? Please do. Uh, do you think then we have enough time of all the things that you have mentioned? It's an overnight affair. It's an overnight affair effort. Where there's will, there's a way. We've done it before. You know, it's just a question of people sitting, agreeing, so that we don't have a disputed election. We've called it PREPARE, which is an acronym for Pre-Election Pact on Electoral Reforms, so that we agree on a pre-election and a post-election environment. What happens in the announcement of election? What happens on the one who they've managed to win and the one who they've managed to allow the one to win to also be seen? to play a role so that we have one nation, one people, and one vision. That can only be a product of a conversation. Nations are built by dialogue and a conversation. Nations are not built by violence. They are not built by these attacks of arrogance, trying to kill people. You end up with a symmetry and not a nation. And if you do that, we don't know what you want to be. Right, Thank you. Thank you very much, members of the Fourth Estate, for your time this afternoon. Thank you, uh, and we will continue to engage with you on, on other platforms. Have God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming at a short notice. We really love you. Hoping to see you very soon. God bless. Thanks.